Good morning, folks, uh, and uh, thank you for joining me for this video, uh, which will be about area under a curve. So what we're going to learn in this section um, is going to be how to go from rectangular to parametric as far as setting up the uh, integral, which is most important. So I'm going to start with the example of a parabola. Uh, which I'm going to try to find the area under the curve with respect to dx. So as you all know, the rectangle here is vertical, so that's a delta x. And uh, if you go top minus bottom, you get f of x minus 0, which gives me the height of the rectangle. So that's just simply going to be f of x. And then my limits obviously are going to go from 0 to 4. Okay. So I'll come back to this parametric stuff that I'm doing at the top here. Right now I'm just going to focus on how to set this up in rectangular form, which is going to be the key to these, uh, to these problems, the key point, OK? So since I know the integral in rectangular form is the integral from 0 to 4, the height, which is f of x, which translates into 4x minus x squared, dx and I'll let you go through the work there yourself pretty easy to follow and you know I would recommend you pause the video and kind of work it work, work through it and see if you get 32 third uh, for the answer so once that's done right we're gonna need to set this up and show that the answer is in fact the same in parametric form now I did give you at the top here what the uh, parabola looks like in parametric form and I also gave you the limit but the m very crucial part of this is also how do you figure out those limits okay but let's assume for this case uh, that I'm giving you the limits to be between 0 and 2 so if you actually go to Desmos and you graph that parametric equation and you change your interval for t from 0 to 2, you should be able to see uh, the parabola above there that I gave you at the top. OK, so it is important that when you're setting up the area under a curve for a parametric equation that you do know what it looks like in rectangular form first. So this form right here, f of x dx, is very important. Because now all I have to do is substitute. Really, that's the key word, is I'm substituting. Now, how do I know f of x is 4t squared minus t to the 4? Well, remember, f of x is equal to y by definition. And y is given in parametric form to be this. So it's a straightforward substitution. But what about dx? Well, dx is just a derivative of x. And since x is also given at the top to be t squared, so here I'm just differentiating t squared, which gives me 2t dt. So those are straightforward substitution. All right. And then down here, I'm showing the limits, how to figure out the limits for t. So since I know the limits for x are 0 and 4, I can substitute those into the function x equal t squared. And then I'll get 0 for t. And I'll get two different answers for the upper bound, 2 and negative 2. So I'm using positive 2 in this case. Uh, as I said, if you graph it from 0 to 2, you'll get that parabola there. Now, I'm wondering what you would get if you graph it from negative 2 to 0. So I'll let you discover and figure out that part. Now, the integral is fulfilled. I know all the different parts or pieces of it. I know the limits. So now I'll let you work through the integration yourself. Again, you can pause and work it out and make sure that you're getting the right answer. All right. To make sure you understand uh, these concepts, I would recommend you go back to the top, you write down the problem, you try to work it out by yourself without looking at anything to see if you can actually go from point A to point B to point C without any help. And if you get stuck, no big deal. Play the video, 
get yourself unstuck. Once you're unstuck, pause it again and then work through the rest of it. It's really a good habit. Okay. As for example two, we're going to be proving that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I, in this case, I gave you the parametric form of a circle centered at 0, 0. And this is one of many forms that we could use for a circle. Now, what I'm trying to do here is setting it up in rectangular form. And I'm going to be integrating it in rectangular form with respect to dx again. So top minus bottom, which would be f of x minus 0, which is simply f of x. Now, since I'm going to be integrating it from 0 to r, that only gives me the area in quadrant 1. Hence, you can see that I'm multiplying the entire integral by 4 for symmetry to get the full circle. Now, what's important to note, that that 4 is still there, when I'm making the switch to parametric form. f of x, by definition, is y, and y is given as r cosine t d of x is simply the derivative of x, which is the derivative of r sine t. And as you can see, I'm showing the work in green here. So the only part that's missing here is determining what my limits are going to be. Now I know x, the limits for x are between 0 and r. And since I'm trying to switch from x limits to t limits, I'm going to use the function x equal r sine t. So what we'll do is we'll substitute the lower bound 0 for x and the upper bound r for x. And then we'll solve these separate equations until we get the lower limit for t and the upper limit for t, which in fact will give us 0 and pi over 2. So once I substitute everything into the area function, Again, I'm going to integrate this and show that the answer is pi r squared at the end. So r times r is r squared. That's a constant, so I can take it outside. I'm left with cosine squared t, which we know to be, there's a power reducing formula for that. So once you follow through the rest of the work, it should clearly come out to be pi r squared, as you can see. Again, these, this is a good place to pause and kind of work through the work yourself. Okay, very good. Take a little break. Go do some jumping jacks, some push-ups. Two minutes, let the brain rest, come back and watch example three. So what I would recommend you do for example three is try to set it up yourself in rectangular form without looking at my solution. Now I'm going to try and set this up with respect to dy so I can switch it up a little bit so you guys can be exposed to both cases dx and also dy. Okay. Then I could have done this with respect to dx but I'm going to do this with respect to dy instead. So you can kind of see uh, some of the changes along the way. So Again, I would expect you to pause the video, try it out first, work it out, get the answer, and then play the video, compare. All right, so I assumed you did that and you are back. So I'll continue with the explanation. Since I'm doing this with respect to dy, I have to think of it as right minus left. And the right is just the function f of y. The left is the y-axis, which is zero. So clearly the height of the rectangle in this case will be f of y. I need to get the function in the right form. So I'm solving for x to get x by itself. And then I'm substituting my limits, which are from 2 to 4, my function, and then I can integrate and get the answer of 4 radical 2 over 3. Now, what is important to note here is I'm going to need to do this in parametric form. But what is f of y equal to? 
f of y by definition is equal to x. And x is given in parametric form. as t and y as x squared plus 2, uh, sorry, not that one, x is t and y is t squared plus 2. So pause the video, go find out if you can substitute each part of the integral and then come back and check to see if, you, if it makes sense. Also figure out the new limits for t. And that's what the catch is. How do you find those two, those, those two limits, the lower bound and the upper bound for t knowing that y is between 2 and 4. Yeah, it's not that difficult, it's not that tricky. As long as you use logic and follow through, you'll be able to get it. All right, so I assumed you paused the video, you tried everything you can, it's okay if you didn't get it right, now you're back to see how you did. To figure out the limits for t, I would have to use y equals t squared plus 2. Why? Well, because the limits that are given are y limits, which are between 2 and 4. So I need to substitute the y limit 2 and the y limit 4 in that equation and figure out the different t values. Again, I'll let you think about why I chose radical 2 for t and not negative radical 2. So maybe you'll have an explanation for me next time we meet on Wednesday. And if you don't understand it, please bring it up as a question. Since we know in rectangular form, it's the integral of f of y dy. But remember, f of y by definition is x. So that's why you see x here. And x can be replaced by t. dy is simply the derivative of t squared plus 2 which is 2t dt. And then my limits have been determined. So again, I'll let you work through the integration. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. And you'll come to the realization that, in fact, you get the answer for radical 2 over 3. Voila. All right. Very good. Now, you'll have a week to learn these concepts, because next week on Monday, you'll have another video whatever video I end up posting, whether it's about this topic or not, it doesn't matter. But at the beginning of the video, you'll have a quiz that you can work on and you'll have all day to work on, uh, on a question regarding the area in rectangular form, which you'll have to also set up in parametric form. So both ways, and then show that the answer comes out to be the same. Thanks guys for joining me today, or whenever, and have your questions ready to go on Wednesday by 9 a.m. Best of luck to you in the homework, and uh, until then, be safe, take care, and bye for now.